You're listening to Let's Talk a Little Shop with me, Stephanie Baringhaley, your professional podcasting resource for staying on trend and connecting you to the news that matters in the retail world. Let's talk a little shop. Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk a Little Shop. I'm your host, Stephanie Baringhaley, and joining us today, we have the founder and the CEO of the Boutique Hub, Ashley Alderson. Ashley, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Stephanie. This is awesome. We are so grateful because we know you are all over the place. You are in Nashville. You are in Vegas. So the fact that we get to uh, chat with you today, we're so excited. Oh, well, thanks for having me. I love the opportunity just to get to meet retailers of all shapes and sizes wherever they are. So this is a great opportunity. Perfect. Well, there might be some um, some of our listeners who aren't too familiar. So I'd love for you to chat a little bit about who you are and this amazing thing, this amazing community that you've created. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll start with a little bit of backstory because I think everyone here, we're all business owners, right? And I think if there's one thing that collectively we all learned in school is this idea of I'm going to lay out this perfect business plan and it's all going to go the way that I think it is. It's crap. <laughs> And every good business I think, sometimes starts by accident or has a big pivot. Um, but it also, every great business starts with a purpose and a why and trying to solve someone's problem. And ironically, um, mine actually started as a consumer problem more than a boutique problem. So I'm from North Dakota, not exactly a boutique Mecca back in the day, but I still grew up loving to discover boutiques all over the country when we would travel. And I would find myself coming back to North Dakota going, man, where can I find cool shops like this? And way back then, you know, this was before social media. This was before a lot of boutiques were online. And I thought, you know, I've got to find a place where I can pull these boutiques together. And people like me from the Midwest who felt like, Fashion was very New York and it was LA, but we all felt a little left out. Like, what about the rest of us? And to me, boutiques answered that question. And so I thought, how could I pull all these boutiques together in one central place so that people like me can shop them? And ironically, that's how the Boutique Hub really started, which I would say kind of by accident. We wanted to be a consumer platform, like an online shopping mall of boutiques. And so when I started to build that platform, I literally moved from Wisconsin or from North Dakota to Wisconsin with my husband, long story for his <laughs> career. Um, but when we made that move, we really invested our life savings with a web developer saying, we're going to build this online shopping mall of boutiques. When we did that and we started to bring all these boutiques together, we realized that boutiques really needed each other. You know, most of these retailers were former stay-at-home moms or teachers or nurses. They didn't have business backgrounds. They didn't know how to use social media, which was brand new at the time or run Facebook ads, any of these things, <laughs> manage people. So the Boutique Hub really had a big pivot and moved from a consumer platform to a community. And that's 10 years ago now. Um, it's our big 10 year anniversary this Ooh, year. Congratulations. Thank you. So today our purpose is we are the one central resource across the world. We serve every state in the United States and eight mm -hmm. countries um, with retailers, and we provide them every tool they could need to grow and accelerate their business from community to expert education to wholesale um, networking and, and marketplaces and opportunities, and now also data for small business retailers as well. So we're, we're the one-stop shop. We're the hub for every type of retailer, uh, small business owner. You jumped in and just did it. Your husband is absolutely amazing. He sounds amazing because he supported you to do it, but you found the void. You found the void in the marketplace. And I have to tell you, I talk to so many retailers that come through and they're fresh. They're so fresh. And you're right. They're deathly afraid that they have this big dream and they're like, we're going to open this up and we're so excited. But then it hits them where it's like, uh oh, this is really happening. And now my little baby, how do I expand it? How do I keep it? The Boutique Hub does a great job of just laying out a format and educating, educating clients so that they can continue the journey, right? Yes, absolutely. You know, my parents always said this. They said, Ashley, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yep. <laughs> and I feel like that's really the, you know, a core purpose of the Boutique Hub is you may know you've got your business this far, whether you're new or you're scaling or you've got multiple locations, uh, but what you don't know is how to get to the next place or how mm -hmm. to deal with this fire that you're constantly trying to put out. And really the beauty of what's happened at the Hub is you've got thousands of people who have your back who can answer that question because if you don't know, they do. 
And so we really believe in community over competition at the hub and how can we lean on one another because a rising tide lifts all ships. And when two or more retailers come together, we become a destination. We're not competitors, we're a destination and it's an opportunity. And I love it too, because your team is actually doing it. You are checking in on the pulse and you don't just check on it once a month or once a show. You actually do it every day. I just saw your team had posted something of what's a concern right now? Like what's bugging you? And your community is so good because they respond and it's very candid and transparent of, I don't know if I'm going to keep my eye or my lights on, right? Or I don't know what kind of inventory, my inventory is not working or summer's coming and it just seems so slow. So by opening up that conversation and keeping it going, I think you keep everyone engaged. How how do you respond to all these questions? Like, is it something that you respond just on social? Um, every day, like our whole team, uh, it, you might see me a lot. Like I might be the front a lot, but like you said, our team's amazing. Yeah. And they're so engaged and there's lots of former retailers on our team. So they know firsthand the, mm -hmm. the battle that everybody's in. Um, and they are just very driven with our purpose. And so every day on social um, every week on Zoom, we have meetings with retailers and retailers of all types. Um, we have a high level mastermind. So like our multi-million dollar owners, like we're always talking to them. And then our team does try to get to as many markets as they physically can to get that feedback real time in person as well. So we always want to be on the pulse. But I will also say, not only is it just feedback and what we're seeing community, but we're really data driven as well. And that's been a new initiative for us this year. Um, we built an entire like data platform that no one else has access to. There is really no other data source for, for independent retailers across the world, um, but we now have access to that. So our retailers can come in and they can use their platform at the hub to say, hey, here's my e-commerce site. You know, How's it comparing? Where am I ranking compared to other businesses like mine? How can I improve my site speed, my backlinks, my SEO? Um, how are my ads converting compared to others? So we really try to use data to also tell a story of what work, what's working and what's not. And then we use that information to tailor all of our trainings and our education mm -hmm. to what we see as the pulse of the industry right now. So summer school, for example, is a huge training we do in the summer months. And that has to do with what do you do during the summer? So <laughs> <laughs> what's happening with AI today? Why are some businesses accelerating and why are some slowing down? And what do you do about it if that's you? So always on the pulse from a few different channels. I love that. And e okay, we have to talk about e-commerce because there's still some people who... They're nervous about entering that world, but it's vital. Like you have to do it. So for somebody who hasn't set up their e-commerce site, what are kind of some tips of the trade? Oh, great question. So I will say at the hub, I've had the privilege to work with stores of, of like I said, all types. And mm -hmm. one group of those stores are these generational stores. They've been around, you know, parents, grandparents started the store. Now another generation is taking them over. And so this question does come up a lot. And before COVID, you maybe could get by with not having e-commerce, but COVID accelerated everything. Yep. So my opinion is if you don't have an e-com shop, if you don't have a website, if you're not on, and I will say Shopify, because personally, I just think it's better than all the rest. Yeah. If you aren't there, you aren't anywhere. That's if right. you can't get found on Google, if you don't have an e-com place, if you aren't, because this is how consumers are really like vetting you, right? They're going to your website saying, is this legit? Do I want to waste my time going there? Do they have the brands that I want? Can I trust them? What's the story and what's the purpose? Because people do business with people, not companies. Yeah. So we've got to have all those to be found. And it's really not as big and scary as it used to be. It's easier than ever to set up a Shopify site to integrate that with whatever point of sale you're using or to use Shopify's point of sale. They're making en enhancements to it all the time. Um, and it's such a like friendly mm -hmm. open API platform that has so many apps and integrations. So it's all kinds of tutorials, shouldn't be big and, and scary, but everybody does need to be online. Absolutely. And it's so funny. So it's baseball season and my family is all into it and I feel outnumbered. So I'm the first one. We're all be on the couch, right? Like, woo, okay, let's go. We're, we're Padre fans. So we have constant uh, disappointment, but I shop, I go on Instagram and I go, this is super cute. And then I'm very compulsive. And I, just, I have to have it. Right. And so I'm always exploring new boutiques and new fresh. I love fresh, mm -hmm. fun product and it makes me feel good. And then I don't feel so bad that I'm in a room outnumbered, you know? <laughs> So true. And going back to this idea, like post COVID, you, maybe our generation, like we're used to online shopping. We grew up with that opportunity. But I will say even up to, you know, 50, 60, 70 year old, 
um, family members, COVID made them start online shopping. Absolutely. So really, not just one demographic of people, everybody online shops and everybody has a smartphone. So you've got to be there to get found. Okay, so we talked about it a little bit. It's summer, right? And it might be a difficult time for a lot of um, a lot of boutiques, a lot of businesses. So what are recommendations outside of going to your fabulous class where you can just enhance your skills and your company? Uh, what can they what can people do inside the stores to kind of promote um, activity and get people inside? Oh man, we could spend a whole hour talking about this because I feel so passionate about this. But let's start here. We all know the J months, and, and I guess this depends on you. Everyone has their own version of the J months. So for most people, it is January, it is June, it is July, but you might be in a resort location and that's not you. You've got a different version of the J months. Okay, fine. So let's translate that to whatever it is in your area. The first thing that you have to do is you cannot mentally defeat yourself mm -hmm. by telling yourself it's a J month because I've seen countless stores say, you know what? I know it's going to be slow, so I'm just going to order less. And then their energy begins to drop. And then they say, well, you know, no one's really ordering. So I'm actually going to be posting less. I'm going to be sending less emails. And they aren't carrying through with the energy and excitement that they normally would in their content. And, you know, people buy what you're most excited about. That energy translates through every piece of content you create. So the mental game is the most important. If you tell yourself you're going to be slow, you will be slow. <laughs> or if you prepare and say, Y'all, dang it, I know it's going to be a J month, but here's all these promotions and events and activities and VIP programs um, and really like operating my reward system to get people through the door. If you go into it with that intentionality and focus, you will have a much different outcome for the J month. Now, that being said, point number two is this. If it truly is a little bit slower for you, and yes, you're bringing energy and excitement, but if you do have more time on your hands, I mean, you better make hay while the sun shines. Mm -hmm. So if it's slow, like how's your email automation? How's your e-commerce store? Are you optimizing your apps? Do you have like a functioning CRM? Are you reaching out and segmenting your audience? How's your branding? How's your photography? How's your TikTok and real game going? Do you have a YouTube channel? Make hay while the sun shines because after the J months comes the rainbow after the storm. And that's the two busiest seasons in retail. And that's back to school and holiday. So everything we do right now sets us up for this huge opportunity that's coming. And if we aren't prepared for it, I'm like a big movie quoter. So I'll just say, Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last, right? Target <laughs> is going to beat you. And they're going to be selling their gal dang Lisa Frank pencils before you even thought about putting out a lunchbox for back to school. Yeah. You're ahead of the game. Oh, I love, I think energy is everything. So oh, yeah. You ever see, what was the movie? There's a sloth in it, and it's like a Disney movie, whatever. But if you're just down and you're not putting things out into the atmosphere, nothing good can come back in. So I love empowering yourself, see what you can do to better the business, keeping mentality games strong, and making sure everyone knows that you are relevant and that you should be coming in because you've got some hot items for somebody to purchase. I love that. Absolutely. And on top of it, here's the thing. If you think about your customer demographics, only 3% of your customer base is ready to buy right now. Mm -hmm. And there's another 7% that would buy if you presented it in the right way. And they thought, okay, yeah, impulse, that's for me. So you have 90% of people who probably are not ready right now to buy, but how do you keep them engaged? And so whatever your J months are, you have to be thinking strategically about how do I build relationships with people, even if they aren't buying from me right now. So anytime we put content out in the world, it's not just like, buy this, buy this, buy this for sale, new arrival. We get sick of that. But talk to me. Tell me about your business. Tell me about the generations. Tell me the story. What is the why? What is your customer demographic? What are they like loving right now? What are they doing right now? Are they going boating or camping or glamping or it's back to school or it's Father's Day? Like, are they going on vacation? Are they going to weddings? Relate with them on a personal level, not just on a product level. Do this trick. Ask them this one simple question. Brussels sprouts? Question mark. Oh. Brussels sprouts? Question mark. Because every <laughs> their mother has a freaking opinion about Brussels sprouts or a recipe, right? Love it or hate it. So if you can get into the minutia of who is my customer and what is their life like on a daily basis and talk that type of content with them, they're going to be seeing you more often in the algorithm with that type of content which then when you go in to post your new arrivals and invite them to the store or online to shop, now they're going to be seeing that content. So relationship first, sales second. 
So good. I hate Brussels sprouts. So that is a perfect, I have strong feelings about it. <laughs> but you're right, you're courting them. You are courting the next generation or the next sale. And it's not through sales, which I love because you're humanizing the process. And you're just saying, what do you like? And that's going to help you when you go to all these trade show events out there to buy new products, to source new goods. Um, you're going to have a better pulse on what your clients want, what your, what your friends want that are local, which is great. Absolutely. So let's break down how important product selection is mm. and what that looks like in terms of diversifying it, where it's not just apparel, but also encompassing the candle or the lip gloss or speak to us a little bit about what's going on in the actual brick and mortar and how to optimize product selection. Yeah, I love this question. And specifically, new retailers really battle with this question. So I want to give a really easy analogy that we all can follow. Um, if you guys go to the grocery store, if you do grocery shopping, this you'll, you'll fit right in, right? So I think about assortment as four categories. Uh, the first category is the trend category. So when you're going to market, you're looking for like what's hot, what's trending, what's the latest thing that is going to stop the scroll and can be like a lead product for my collection that I'm going to launch. If I go to the grocery store, this is me going to the fancy little charcuterie board section. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, great. Like I'm going to entertain. People are <laughs> impressed with my meat and cheese tray and these fancy olives that no one actually eats. So <laughs> I can get the things at the charcuterie board section. But if you think about really grocery shopping, if you only came home with the charcuterie board section, everyone in your house would kill you. Oh, yeah. like, where's the meat, right? Where's the, where's the essentials? Um, so you've got to move past just trend because trend alone cannot sustain your business. Mm -hmm. Second assortment is bread and butter. That's my meat, right? This is where my margin is made. This is what people buy. My data is telling me, my reports are telling me that these are the sizes, these are the brands, these are the colors. These are the things that I will sell through in turn again and again and again. So you've got to have that bread and butter category. The third category when you go to the grocery store is you've got your coupons, right? You've got all the oh, yeah. items and you're like, do I need 55 rolls of toilet paper? Of course I do because they're on sale. <laughs> so in, in retail, that's your margin builder. So when you're going to ASD, when you're going to shows, when you're working with vendors, what's your off price section? What can I buy low and sell high? I know I can really get a great margin on these items. It doesn't have to be every item across your store. You may have a really like standout, like name brand product that you only can get a two times markup because of MSRP. So that's fine, but that can't sustain your whole business. Mm -hmm. That's why you need the margin builder or the coupon section so you can really make some profit at the end of the day. And that, when you think about going into the fourth quarter, is essential because that's your Black Friday, that's your Pink Friday, that's your sales and promotions. You've got to be able to mark up enough that you can mark it down a little bit, make people feel like they're getting a deal and still put money in your pocket. And then the fourth category at the end of the day is I've got kids. So when I go to the grocery store, they're like, mom, can I buy this and this and this and this and this <laughs> at the checkout section? And you're like, keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> so in the retail scenario, that's your add-ons and your upsells. So that's, I have to have a fully merchandised look. I've got to have a beautiful vignette. I've got to have a great window display. I have to have layering pieces. I have to have all the little accessories and trinkets on the counter that someone can quickly add on as a gift or as an extra. And a ton of margin and our average order value are really built with the add-ons and upsell category. So when you're going to a show, you've got to think about, I'm going in with a plan. I know what my budget is. I know what my four assortments are. And then I know based on all of the product categories in my business, what's my budget? What do I need in each of these areas so I can buy smarter at the end of the day? That is such an incredible breakdown. <laughs> and it's so funny that you say, so I always compare ASD Market Week is like TJ Maxx, right? Because first of all, everything's super affordable so that you can put it in your storefront and you can build those margins. But we've got like mugs, we've got candles, we've got apparel, we've got a huge beauty section. So we have so much product. And I always warn people before you come, you have to look at a map and you have to do prep work because you will get lost. And then if you go into the general merchandise section that has like dollar items, you're going to be like, oh, this is not the haul for me. And so we always say, do your prep work. And I think you can speak really well because you go to all these different shows. So for someone who understands those four components and want to diversify their mix a little bit, and they're planning on going to a trade show, whatever one that might be, mm -hmm. how should they best prep or plan uh, for market? 
this is such an essential question. And I wish, I wish more people would take time for this. I know. I'll tell you, even some of the like really big stores that we work with, they're like, I just, I don't have a plan. And I'm like, oh man, you're just setting yourself up for failure. So there's the assortments that we talked about, but I would take it one step further. And I would say, if you look at your marketing calendar, because for me, marketing just dictates everything. Yep. When you look at your marketing calendar, I'm a huge believer in collections and collections are really just reasons people would buy from you. Like, why are they coming into your store? Why would they land on your website? So if there's 52 weeks in a year, there's 52 different reasons why people would come in. So they, they need a teacher gift. They need a graduation gift. It's Father's Day. Um, it's, you know, back to school. It's a change of seasons. And now they're buying winter coats. Like Whatever it is, there's all these reasons. So if you can at least lay out a new collection every week in your business or a new collection every two weeks, then before you go to market, you can prep by saying, all right, here's, here's my collections. Here's my reasons why people are buying. Plus, here's my four assortments that I've already laid out. What types of products could I put in each of these places so that you have a plan to check them off? Otherwise, you are going to find yourself in the beauty section after one margarita. <laughs> you're going to regret your decisions, you know, a month down the road. What was I thinking? I had two margaritas and it was an accident. So the prep work is essential. And then I would say, get to know the vendors. You know, buying wholesale, the most important thing is you're building a partnership with shows and with vendors. Yeah. And it has to be a win-win. So get to know the people, really take the time while you're at the show to not just find the great product. You don't have to buy it on day one. I would make my rounds on day one and get to the lay of the hand and take pictures and say, how does this work into my budget and my plan? And then go on day two and start to make your purchases. But get to know people in the process. Love it. And most shows have education, which is amazing. You can check out their seminar area. I would mark off every single session that you feel is relevant to your business and take the time. It's so easy to get so caught up with appointments or just draw on the floor, but definitely take the time because you can take, first of all, it'll inspire you. And it just gives you that other, that, that little bit of energy that when you go back onto the show floor, you're like, I'm focused and I feel good. And so check out, check out the seminars. <laughs> Always check out the seminars. And if your feet are swollen, I mean, go take your shoes off at the seminar. No one's going to judge you. <laughs> no judgment, none at all. So I guess I want to wrap it up. So you are everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And you help so many people. And I think everyone's like, what's her secret? How does she do it? How does she do this whole life work balance that every one of us is trying to achieve? And we're always like, oh, it's a fail day, which is okay. So Tell us a little bit about how you just put it all together and keep keep going. Oh, well, you're so sweet for thinking that I have it all together. <laughs> I'm told you, I don't, I don't. But um, man, I'm. People ask me recently, they're like, "How are you doing? Like, how are you really doing?" And I said, "You know, I'm just, I'm in that season. I'm in that season of right now. I'm kind of just trying to get by. It's a really busy season with kids and sports, and you know, now we're into summer, which is great and and helpful." But what I've learned over the years, I've got three kids and we've got this great business, but what I've learned is um, really number one, this, there is a huge difference in being a CEO and being an owner. And we all start as entrepreneurs. We all feel like we have to hustle. We have to do it all. We have to be everywhere. And we have our hands in way too many pots. And at that point, balance is really hard. Like you're just trying to fit it all in wherever you can. And balance becomes like a joke. But then you start to realize, okay, if I'm really in this and I'm really going to grow this business and I'm also going to be a great mom and I'm also going to have a life, and I'm going to take care of myself. You have to make a choice. And it truly is a choice that I'm not going to be a hustling entrepreneur. I'm going to be a CEO. And how do CEOs live differently? Really, it comes down to this number one point is that they value time and money differently. Money in this world is infinite. There will always be new ways to make more money, but you can never create more time. So when you start to really value your time, you go in there with a scalpel and you start to operate your calendar on a whole new level. And then you start to take the money that you do have and invest in putting great people around you that can also carry the load, that can also work on income generating activities so that you can multiply time and get your life back. So for me, that's really looked like building a really solid team. They don't have to be big. It doesn't have to be a lot of people. For me, it started with one person who was a babysitter that started to do data entry, that started to do some social media. And we just grew and grew and grew as we could afford to grow. 
but that person is so invested in our mission along with my like personal mission of being a great mom that she's always looking out for me in both areas. Like, Hey, Ashley, here's how we're going to do this in business, but you need to go take this time with your kids and I've got you. So the team is just absolutely critical. But then as a CEO, when you have that hat on, you have to be willing to say no and put a boundary down and say, no, this is the time that I'm going to the basketball game or that I'm going to take a nap. If you need a freaking nap, take a vacation, like whatever it is. And the third, the third layer to this whole thing is you just have to know their seasons. There's seasons where you have to hustle and there's seasons where you can arrange your schedule and you can take a breather. It doesn't have to be go, go, go 24 seven, but you just have to be the CEO to know what season you're in and know how to put a value on your time because you'll never get more time back. I love that. I, I always think of when you're on the plane, right? The first thing they tell you, it's going down. You got to put the little thing on yourself, right? Because you can't help the little one next to you unless you're okay. So I think you're right. taking the nap or going to the spa or taking the jog. There's no guilty feelings. You have to take care of yourself. And you're right. The people that you surround yourself, that's your tribe. That's your village. If, if they can't help you, then you got to re-examine if they're the right one for your uh, part of that tribe. So it's, it's yeah. important yourself, the tribe, and then making sure that you really allow yourself to be successful in your business. But at the same time, if you've got kids or something, they're only going to get older. And then all of a sudden you can't hold them because they're big, right? They're just constantly growing. So taking those moments and not being so hard on yourself and just there's going to be failures, but there's going to be success. And that success, go celebrate it. Pop that champagne and get some girlfriends and make sure that you stop, recognize and say, wow, look what I just did. That's so right. There, I think the biggest misconception in business that I've learned is I think we all start believing that there is some great end in mind. Like there's some finish line that we're chasing toward. There is no finish line. No. There is nothing you are chasing toward. It is not about the destination. It is a thousand percent about the journey that you have to as an entrepreneur and most entrepreneurs really suck at this, to be honest. We all do. I do. <laughs> so caught up in being competitive and chasing the number and chasing the project that we never stop and enjoy the journey. So we're Wherever you can for five minutes a day, just be where your feet are and be grateful for the moment that you're in and the breath that you take and the family and friends and whatever moment it is that you have and the rest will come tomorrow. But quit chasing that final destination. Well, I think this is a perfect time to come to an end, but I am so excited that you and I got to chat today and I look forward to hopefully more conversations and for Everyone who is a Boutique Hub member, um, we are going to do a giveaway. So it's an enter to win opportunity, but it's a four night stay at the Conrad Hotel in Las Vegas this August, um, as well as a swag bag. And we want to teach you how to shop and navigate ASD um, so you can enter in those little margin boosters and really build your business and not be so stressed. Take the kids, you know, take the husband, do a little bit of fun pool time, but then also go see what else can be, you know, put into your storefront. But Ashley, you are one incredible, incredible person. And I think so many people look up to you. So thank you for keeping it real, being honest and giving us these great tips. And if you aren't a member of the Boutique Hub, you need to go. It's a year long process where you are going to feel so supported and so cheered on and knowledgeable um, that you're going to, you're not going to regret it. So you should definitely sign up. That's absolutely right. You're never alone. That is our never motto. alone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ashley. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk a Little Shop. For more episodes, be sure to subscribe to this podcast in iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, or Spotify. And you can help us grow our reach by simply giving us a like, share with friends, comment, and of course, we love positive ratings. Till next time, stay on trend.